Hi there, my name is Willie, and this is Trillion Resales, where I talk about buying and selling just about everything real estate and businesses. Today I want to talk about buying land that has trees on it. Um, I see a lot of people there who have an interest in buying land. They're looking at, let's say, states like Texas, Oklahoma. Uh, you can go on Zillow, Realtor.com. Uh, I think there's a couple of other ones also where you can go on there and you can search for land. And it's, as far as price, it's like all over the spectrum. Uh, you can find properties, you know, let's say like $3,500 for a half acre. And then you can find another, you know, half acre property somewhere else that where they want $35,000 for it. The difference being is that that $3,500 parcel of land, even though it's a half acre, uh, if you look at it, it's full of trees. The other one that's a half acre for $35,000, it might have a few trees on it, but basically has been pretty much clear cut. Uh, makes it very easy if you want to, you know, uh, put down a house. What I'm going to go into today is about those properties that have basically are a forest of trees on them. When you go out to the property, and I always tell everybody, go out to a property that you're interested in. Walk it, look at it, look for certain specific things. In this case here, I'm going to talk about trees. When you find a property that you're interested in and it's full of trees, what you need to do is find out and make sure that you can clear those trees. Because in certain states like Texas and Oklahoma, they have what are called deed restrictions. And they may have it where, yeah, they're selling that, the seller is selling that land really cheap. But the reason why it is so cheap is because it's full of trees and you can't just go in there and just start cutting down trees. So you need to find out about making sure that there's no deed restrictions. You know, it could be that you check and you find out and they say, yeah, no problem, you can go ahead and clear cut the property. The other thing too is like maybe there is a deed restriction and they say, yeah, it's got trees on it, but you can only clear 25% of the property. I said, okay, you know, either way, that's that's still pretty good. You know, you can either just uh, clear all the trees off the property or, you know, let's say 25% of it. What you need is basically enough to be able to put a house on it, whether you're building a house or putting a manufactured home on, uh, you know, and so on. You know, because some people, like nowadays, there's a big trend going on with modular homes. So you want to make sure that also that's the other thing with the deed restrictions. You may find out in some areas, they say, yeah, you can put a home, a home on the property, but no manufactured homes on it. It's got to be site-built home. Or they may have square footage limitations. I've come across some places where they have a deed restriction. The minimal um, GLA, the gross living area of a home, cannot be less than 1,800 square feet. Well, that kind of excludes me because, you know, my wife and me, it's just the two of us, and we don't need a 1,800 square foot home. A two bedroom, one and a half bath house uh, of like, you know, whatever, 11, 1,200 square feet is more than enough for us. See, so there would be no use for me to buy a parcel of land uh, where I'm limited to nothing less than 1,800 square feet. The other thing, too, which you also have to look at is where is the land located? Is it close to uh, any sort of a body of water? I've seen some parcels of land that are fronting some sort of a river or fronting a lake. Now, what you have to look at and take in consideration, what are the utilities for the area? Most of the time, you'll be able to be fairly close or be able to get uh, electrical service. Some places may have uh, a type of community uh, water system or it could be a private water company that you're going to have to tie into. Other times you may have to just uh, put in a well. The other thing is wastewater. A lot of places, especially if you get out in the rural areas, uh, there's going to be no sewer system as, as, you know, if you're coming from a city 
type of uh, living, you know, and you go, you're going out into a rural area, you're, you're going to be uh, looking at a uh, septic system. Now, if you're looking at a piece of land that's fronting a river or a lake, you're going to want to find out how high the water table is because the last thing you want is to buy a land, get everything ready to put a house on, a, on that land, and then when you have to go in and put in the septic system, find out that as they get down 50 feet, they hit water. And then guess what? Well, there goes your uh, septic system uh, plans uh, because they won't be able to put, uh, put in the, the tank and all that. So getting back to clearing the land of trees. So let's say you're interested in the land. You go to wherever you got to go to find out it, that if you can clear the land of the trees and they say yeah okay you know you can clear it all or you can you, you're only limited to 25 percent of the of the lot size okay no problem now how do you get rid of all those trees well some people may think oh i can just go over to this hardware store rent a chainsaw and just start cutting trees down well chainsaws are dangerous and if you've never used one before you're probably going to want to find somebody who can do it for you. Because the other thing too, is if you never cut down trees, last thing you want to do is start to cut down a tree, have it come back and fall on you or somebody else on your car, or if there happens to be a, a neighbor's home next door on the, on the parcel of land next, next to the one that you're buying, have a tree fall on their house. Uh, that's not a good way to start out as a good neighbor. Uh, I think the neighbor's going to be a little unhappy that you cut a tree down and it fell on their house. So, okay, so now you go, you hire somebody who's going to clear the land for you. They're, they're clear-cutting the land of all the trees. The other thing you're going to be left with are tree stumps. You're going to need to find out how much is it going to cost to remove all those tree stumps. Because you can't just, you know, have a contractor come out and start building a house or have somebody come out and going to put down a, um, a manufactured home and you've got tree stumps all over the property. So all those tree stumps have to be removed. That's gonna have to, that's gonna be another cost. Now you can find out if that will be included in the tree removal or if that's a separate price. Uh, there's different ways of removing tree stumps uh, that's the other thing too. You got to find out, you know, is somebody going to come out with like a dozer and just scrape the lot and they get out all those tree stumps or are they going to be, you know, using a stump grinder? They're going to drill a hole down in the center of the stump and pour some kind of chemicals that's going to kill the stump and then they hook up uh, some sort of heavy equipment and pull the rest of it out. There, there's different ways, but that's the main thing when you're looking at land especially in forested areas you want to make sure that you can clear the trees if there's a deed restriction that says you can only clean clear half of the parcel or a quarter of it and as long as you're okay with that that's great uh, you want to find out how much it's going to cost to remove the trees and the stumps and then if you're buying a parcel of land that is next to like a river or a lake you want to find out how high the water table is because you want to make sure especially if it's in a rural area that you're going to be able to put in a septic system now for those parcels of land where they're already cleared maybe there's just you know three or four trees on that you're probably going to be okay your main thing there then is just making sure that you're going to have you know electrical service if you're going to go natural gas or propane you know will that be available uh, what type of water, you know, is there any sort of water service? Is it going to be city, uh, community, private water company, or do you need to put in the well? And then the same thing also with the wastewater. If you need to be able to put in uh, a septic tank, or is there a way where you can connect to uh, uh, like some sort of a sewer system? So, and that's about it. So, uh, yeah, get out there and just remember that, yeah, that $3,500 half-acre parcel may sound good, but there's going to be a lot of additional costs that you need to take in consideration uh, versus maybe paying a little bit more 
for a parcel of land. It's already been cleared and a, less of a headache to be able to have a home built or a manufactured home put on. So I'm going to, uh, next video, I'm probably going to go talk about, uh, I'm going to say checking out land out in like desert areas. Uh, there's a lot of things there with that too. So have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye.